Hey guys, I'm out here at the observatory again. Um, kind of a funny little issue that I wanted to bring you guys up on and kind of uh, show you about. So mounts rely on, tracking mounts rely on a worm gear turning a big spur gear that makes the mount move. And one thing I've been running into is my RA, my red ascension axis has been slipping. So basically I'll tell it to slew and I hear the motor rev up but there's no movement on the mount. And that just means that, that that worm gear is not engaging with the the main gear that it's supposed to turn. So today I wanna to take a look at it. And it's kind of a common thing, I, at least I've seen, um, whenever you have an adjustable worm gear, meaning you can adjust the tension and the meshing and all of that, you inevitably run into some problems where the adjustability means that there's bolts and things that can loosen over time. And so thusly you gotta adjust this, but it's a pretty easy fix. I'll show you guys how to do it um, and kind of how to, how to make all that stuff work a little bit better. So I'll catch you guys on the, once we get inside and take a look at it. So uh, first things first, let's get ourselves a little bit of light in here. Yay, let there be light. I don't need much, so I'm just gonna open it that much, but roof controller, roll off roof motor power, MVO controls, they're awesome, really cool company, highly recommend that. So uh, now we're in here, here is the right ascension gear cover, and here's the right ascension motor, and that's the one that we're having some trouble with. And this is a Lost Mandy G11 um, without the new tucked motor kit, so it's kind of their older version, but basically we have a couple of bolts here and here, to take this cover off, and then we're gonna basically be able to see what's inside of there and see how our mesh is looking. So we'll take a look at that right now. So you guys can see now, if we look at this, that covers off, and let me get the exposure a little bit better, there we go. The cover's off, and if you turn this, it's actually pretty difficult to turn, so the mesh is not optimal right now. Um, but also, what we've got going on is this little coupler. You guys can see that gap between there. This coupler, I think, is what's been our problem. I think that coupler is slipping when the tension gets to be too great, which is actually a really good thing. Like, you want this coupler to, to um, slip, because if the mount was to hit something, you don't want the motor to just keep turning. So I really like that. It probably just means we have a bad coupler. We can change that out really easily. So what it turned out was that it was the coupler in here. So I got the coupler reattached. Um, the other night, this actually slewed into the roof. Um, the roof was closed and SGP or Sequence Generator Pro told the mount to slew, even though the roof was closed, which was, <coughs> excuse me, was not a great thing. So I think that's what messed up the coupler, but the coupler's reattached. Um, I've got the gear mesh worked so that there's very little backlash. Backlash is how much kind of uh, uh, error there is in your mesh between your worm gear and your main gear and you want to get a tiny bit of backlash but as little as you can get you just don't want the gearing to be too tight so i've got it back on here we should be good i'm going to put the motor back on and then we're going to test a slew and make sure that it slews correctly we should be good to go Woo. <clears throat> let's do it All right, let's get it all connected. We're gonna just back out of all this stuff. We're gonna get right to the slew screen and let's give it a try. Whoa. That sounds pretty nice. Cool, that's beautiful. So <clears throat> I think we're fixed. We got it, we got it working pretty well. Um, Got everything back on there, got the worm mesh set right. So now we just gotta do a couple more things uh, which I wanna go over as well. So the next thing is uh, whenever you run a mount like this remotely, um, you basically need it to know where it is all the time. And uh, the way that most mounts do that is they have stepper motors and they're able to see how many revolutions the stepper motor makes and they can turn that into basically a knowledge of where it is in the sky. Well, the problem is if you uh, restart your mount <clears throat> or you move it 
without the mount knowing that you moved it, like if you push it around or like what I was doing when I was twisting the gearing without it knowing, um, the mount will lose where it is on the sky. Now there are some mounts with what are called absolute encoders, which are special little encoders that uh, watch the mount position all the time. This doesn't have that though, so we need to reteach it where it is on the sky. And the way we do that is we actually uh, restart the mount with what they call a cold start. A cold start essentially uh, resets the mount, gets rid of all the settings, all that kind of stuff. Since we messed with the gearing, we really want to do that. But when we restart it, we want it to be in the home position, which is pointing toward the North Celestial Pole. So I'm going to open the roof a little bit more. I'm going to slew the mount to the home position. Not slew it, I'm going to move it to the home position manually. And then I'm going to restart it so that it knows that it's in the home position. And that should get us ready to go. So just hit the restart button, so it's restarting right now. Um, and then once it's restarted, I'm going to go into the settings, and we're going to tell it to, in the future, uh, not do what's called a cold start, because we don't want it to lose its position now. If we uh, restart it for any other thing, I, I manually will cold start it when it needs to. And then what we can do is we can go into the park command, and it should know where the home position is. Let's see, so there we are. It's now parked there. And then we need to reteach it a new park position. So what we're going to do is we're going to slew it to where it needs to be. And the cool thing is um, the roof controller motor has a little sensor up here, which basically can detect and see whether the mount is parked or not. And so what we need to do is slew it so that it's in that position. So that's going to be our next order of business. So we'll put it on the slew speed here. We'll slew it over. We'll park it and then we'll be done. So hopefully you guys found this informative. Uh, the Lost Mandy G11 is a fantastic mount system. Uh, it uses the Gemini 2 system, which is great. Um, and if you guys are looking for like a really reliable mount, this is one of those ones that's been out for probably 20 years. And it's just a really good performer. It's all made in the US. It's very well. It's all machined. None of it is cast. So it's just really well built. Um, and the customer service from the company is awesome. So. That's why I like it. It's it's simple enough that uh, the average Joe can do do some maintenance on it and do some work on it. So anyway, hope you guys like this video. Hit that thumbs up button if you did. Hit the dislike button if you didn't. Leave a comment down below if you guys have any questions. And subscribe for more of this content where we just have an adventure with astrophotography. Kind of a fun thing. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Woo!